Welcome to Poland Daily History with me, Nicholas Richardson. In this series of episodes, we're going to be looking at Polish history from a British perspective and also Anglo-Polish relations in a geopolitical context. And I'm delighted to have with me in the studio today Richard Barclay, who is half Polish. He's been living in Poland for 20 years and is able to bring a unique perspective onto this subject. I think it's also, uh, unlike continental European uh, class systems, to the extent they exist, it's always been very clever about admitting people at of a course. certain point. Pragmatic. To, pragmatic. And pragmatic. You, could, you could even say that actually is the way that electoral reform came about, gradually extending the franchise in the, in, 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 in the United Kingdom, as it then was, to take in people so that you didn't have... A, it's a point David Starkey makes. You don't have a revolution in the UK, in, in, in Great Britain, about actually destroying things. Our revolutions are about people wanting to be absorbed into the system. Well, except if, if you think of the Lollards, um, if you think of the, uh, you know, the uh, uh, Peterloo massacre, if you think of, um, you, you know, the, the, the smashing of machinery in, in, the, in, the early, in the early stages of the Industrial Revolution, that, you know, that's, that may not be entirely true. But the Anglican Church in Poland uh, served that purpose because who were the people who had, who had money, uh, the sort of middle class? Who were the people who, who accumulated money? And they were mainly Jewish. Now, for a Jew, it was impossible to enter society. So, in the, from the 19th century, the Protestant churches became the middle ground. Uh, the Anglican church, particularly, uh, had a, a, a title that was, it was known as the uh, uh, Society for the Conversion of Jews. That was its mission, to convert Jews. Oh, right. And what this did... In, in Poland? In Poland. Yes. And what this did was it allowed the Polish aristocracy who needed Jewish money to marry. They had to marry Catholics, but it was impossible for a Jew to convert to Catholicism and therefore marry. If you were converting from Protestantism to Catholicism, that was absolutely fine. So the Protestant church has provided this, this, this sort of bridge between Judaism and Catholicism. Right. Uh, there are many families who, who took full advantage of this, like the Zamoyski family. If you go to Koszówko, 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 it, this big Zamoyski palace near, near, near Lublin, uh, you, you, will, you will see that there's Kronenberg, the founder of the Bank Handlowy, right in the middle of the family tree. He was a Jew from, from, from Germany who converted to Protestantism and was able to marry into the Zamoyski family, or rather the Zamoyskis were able to marry him and bring his fortune with him. Um, so there was a certain flexibility, but I think by and large, it was, uh, of course, it was very, very different here. It yeah, was very I, I different. Continental Europe is very different from, very different from, yeah, from, yeah. from the Louise. But no, England is, England is very, f I mean, socially, it's very pragmatic. I mean, my, my stepfather's family, um, uh, were, were, were very interesting, case in point. His grandfather was a farm manager in Lincolnshire who one day left some potato tubers, he let them cross-fertilise, and produced this massive potato. This was about 1892 or something, a little bit later maybe. And uh, he and his sons thought, well, we should, we should capitalise on this. So they called it the King Edward potato, and took it off to the newly crowned King Edward and said, uh, here's a potato for you, Your Majesty. We've called it after you, and there's your picture. Expecting to get a, expecting to get a, uh, uh, mm -hmm. a, a peerage. They didn't get a peerage. But my stepfather said that when he was at Harrow and his parents used to turn up in their Hispano Sousa, which was the most expensive car ever it made, at the time, yes. um, he was always slightly embarrassed by, by their regional accents. Though having said that, but, but, yes, but regional accents, I mean, this is funny, is because if we could hear the great Tory politicians speak, Peel and people like that, they had very strong regional oh, accents. Oh, yes, but... That's... The idea of the non-regional accents is a sort of early 20th century invention, of which, of course... Which the BBC had a role in playing, which, which is Which is good, because you want people to be able to understand what you're saying. And, of course, now this is um, regarded by the, uh, the socialists and the sort of this elitist, and we've got to all speak in a well, funny I, way. Have you heard some of the members of your... Uh, the Conservative Party speaking? I have. 
Well, I mean, my goodness makes well hair rise. It does. But well, we probably uh, <laughs> we better not allow ourselves to go down in, in that particular um, um, well, anyway. I think and and then try and re recontract. <laughs> try, try, and, try and stick to our brief such as it is today. Um, and think about, you know, more about the Anglo-Polish relation. Of course, during the, the time of the partitions of Poland, yes. you know, from 1795... Well, Edmund Burke made a great speech. From yes. Yeah, what did Edmund Burke well, say? Well, Edmund Burke got up and said, well, you know, well, what's happening in Poland? Poland for us is just a country on the moon. Because, of course, at that time, Poland as a, as a, as a state, in an independent state, didn't exist. And, of course, the, you know, the, 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 the British... Listen, we, you we, see, we, the, the Poles have got it wrong. You see, the trouble is, I mean, there's all this nonsense. They talk about the war and the betrayal and so on. It's nonsense. England has never looked to the continent of Europe. I mean, after the French wars, it wanted nothing more to do with the continent of Europe. Why? Because it had an empire. It was empire-building. Yes, it was looking abroad. It is an island. It is a trading nation. It's but uh, yes, I, but I was just getting, the point I was just going to make is, I mean, obviously, uh, while Poland was in this state of flux, mm. divided, of course, the, from, a, from, a, from, a, from a British point of view, as part of our general approach to foreign mm. policy, which mm. is to divide and conquer, or yeah, yeah. To, you know, to make sure the invasion mm. coast mm. particularly was not mm. in one hand. Of course, our only interest in Poland, I think, apart from trade at that time, was to make sure that whatever, whoever was fighting over bits of Poland we, we didn't let any of them become become too powerful. Too powerful. No. Which is a very which I think is something we probably lack today, that sort of Machiavellian cyni, cyni, cynical pragmatic approach to foreign policy. Well the policy. other thing is we don't have a Royal Navy. Uh, you know, no. we have two aircraft carriers that we can't afford to run. And uh, you know the 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 the, the, the conservative government has uh, you know allowed this but, but massive hold. But also at that time, and I think the Napoleonic period is very interesting. Uh, very interesting. interesting historically. But from a Polish point of view, and if looking at Anglo-Polish relations, of course, you you had the the, the French Revolution, then you had the the, the, the uh, preceded by the American Revolution, yes. then the Napoleonic yes. Wars. But interestingly, at that time, generally speaking, these these famous um, Polish characters. Appeared actually fighting for, fighting for the fighting for the French cause against the British, and there were you know. And, and, well, because you see, uh, the thing was that uh, Napoleon hoodwinked the Poles. He sort of set up this uh, Grand Duchy of Warsaw and right. prom made lots of promises, and all he did was just uh, squander their blood in the retreat from retreat from uh, retreat from Moscow. And the Poles, I really can't understand why they hold Napoleon in such esteem, because he sold them down the river. I mean, no, he 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 massacred them. He allowed them to be massacred, and he gave them nothing of value. Uh, uh, you know, one could talk about the Chartarisky Constitution as well, which I think is a highly dubious document. Um, if anybody's read it, I have. Uh, but it really does, you know, maintain the status quo, the class status quo, as far as I understand it.